big part of a, uh, an animal keeper's day is checking that the animals are all okay. It's the biggest part of the, the job, uh, making sure you're doing morning checks, checking that everybody is there. There's no um, births, there's been no deaths overnight, and there's been no injuries. And we just do a general head count and check everybody's behaving normally. So another aspect of uh, zookeeping is doing temp daily temperature checks. So there's lots of checks that we have to do throughout the day. And one of the important ones, especially with uh, tropical animals, is temperature checks. So it's part of the zoo licensing and balai um, that we need to make sure that we've got accurate record keeping in place. So every day we all come down here and we all check the temperatures with all the thermometers and humidity readers in the enclosures. First thing in the morning, uh, we come out, give them a nice check over, make sure everything's okay with them. We do have a youngster with us um, today that was currently about two months old. So in the morning, we'll come out, we'll do a quick visual health check, and then we'll head over with some of the cattle feed, um, which is just some cattle nuts at the um, in the morning, uh, just to bulk them up a little bit. And then once we've done that, um, while they're eating it gives us a good chance to sort of check over the, the back end of them um, and just make sure everything's okay. So my journey to becoming a keeper here at the Animal Zone uh, was helped immensely by the fact that I used to be a student here studying on the level three animal management course. Uh, it really gave me the opportunity to work with such a wide range of species uh, that I otherwise wouldn't have the opportunity to work with. Uh, it's such a great opportunity for students uh, and public alike uh, to come and get to see so many different animals. Another role of keepers is to walk around and make sure that everybody always has fresh water, fresh food, and also, while you're in here, make sure that you're monitoring the animals to ensure there's no problems with the way that any of them are eating. Make sure that they're all walking okay, give a quick visual health check. And just make sure that everybody's okay and everybody's got some fresh food and water for the day. I mean, this is our eastern indigo snake. It was only born last year at Birmingham Nature Centre. Some of the other snakes we've got here, royal pythons, king snakes, corn snakes, um, carpet pythons, and boa constrictors. Um, when it comes to handling, we'll do a lot of handling sessions. We'll use a lot of the tools that we've got currently out, hooks, pinning sticks, probes, um, snake tubes and we talk about all different types of handling, how easy it can be, how difficult it can be. Handling wise guys, this is our emerald tree boa, it is an adult, and these guys have the largest teeth of any non-venomous snake. So these guys are quite impressive when it comes to handling. Um, it is something that we do a lot of here. Um, so pinning wise, and doing internal mouth inspections, looking for any like loose debris, substrate, any reason why the snake might not be eating and it is also a very important point when it comes to visually health checking the animal. We need to fill out daily call sheets, um, we have to do um, temperature checks and things like that but for on a bigger scale we have to be complying with certain record keeping um, aspects as part of our zoo licence as well as our balai. Um, so balai means that we can keep primates, that we're keeping them to, to a high standard and we keep all the correct um, quarantine paperwork and everything like that that means that we you know we are housing them appropriately so one of the things that i really like about um, working at rod baston is uh, compared to other collections you get to work with a right wide range of animals so here i could get to work with the reptiles i could get work with um, the small monkeys the lemurs the paddock animals or i can go and work with the small domestics in other collections you tend to sort of be typecast into a particular area so if you're a primate keeper you'll always work with the primates if you're uh, an elephant keeper you'll work with elephants if you're a big cat keeper that's what you stick with i have been really really lucky in my career where i get to work with a lot of different species with the enrichment the idea is is that you 
have animals that are in captivity that have spent a lot of time looking for food, finding food. It's not the eating the food, it's looking for it that takes most of the time. So when they come into a captive situation, they no longer have those activity budgets at the same level. So we have to give them just simple things. So I can hide um, different uh, invertebrates in here. I could hang it up for the small monkeys, I could hang it up for the lemurs, I could hang it up for the coatis. And the idea is, is they have to figure out how to get the food item out of here and into their bellies. Another one is if you have um, dog toys. So the animals have to figure out it's a cognitive stimulation as opposed to physical manipulation. Um, so all of that adds up, so we're not simply just presenting the food on a shelf and the animals literally find it in seconds and eat it. Another aspect is training. So training is a massive part of any animal keeper's uh, job. It's one of the most rewarding because you're building a relationship with the animal. You're building a positive relationship with the animal. And once you have that trust and that positive relationship, you can do lots and lots of different things with those animals. They trust you enough to be able to cash in on a negative experience. So some examples can include, um, we do full body checks, we can weigh the animals, we can um, health check their teeth, we can check their ears, we can do injection training, we can take blood, we can do lots and lots of different things that aren't necessarily pleasant, but the animals trust us. Most people think when you get a career, it is just a job. You go to work in the morning, you do your job, you go home. But with animal keeping, it's a way of life. It's not just a job. You wake up, you think about the animals, what you're going to build for them. You do training, you research training. You go to zoos on your day off. You go to conferences. You pay for those conferences out of your own pocket. You're constantly researching because it is a way of life. It's not just a job. Um, so zookeeping, not for the faint-hearted. <laughs>